This is a special report from ABC News Digital. I'm Dan Fessler in New York with this ABC News Digital special report. The weather outside, well, frightful. The deep freeze pushing much of the country to record lows. And ABC's Mary Bruce has been following the bone-chilling weather. I'm glad to see that you are bundled up, Mary, because a lot of correspondents are getting ripped because they're not prepared for this. What's going on in Washington? Well, the frigid air has brought single-digit temperatures to Washington today. It's hard to believe that the cold that we're feeling right now would actually be considered warm by comparison to many people across the country. Much of the U.S. resembling the North Pole today, a dangerous Arctic blast crippling the country, plunging temperatures to record-breaking lows. Cold air, and it's not doing any good. What's the worst part about the cold this morning? The wind is very, very bad. I mean, it hurts your face. Yeah, I can't even hardly talk. I'm just trying to defrost right now. It's called a polar vortex, a whirlpool of frigid Arctic air, bringing freezing temperatures to every state but Hawaii, creating a frozen nightmare for travelers stranding commuters on the roads, at airports, and on the tracks. A Chicago family trapped in their car for more than 15 hours. And I told my husband, I said, the next trip that we take will definitely fly. But air travel is no better. JetBlue Monday canceled all flights at four major East Coast hubs. Some flights have resumed. Yeah, I'm pretty upset, but I mean, it doesn't do any good to get angry because there are so many in the same boat. 500 Amtrak passengers stranded overnight outside Chicago. Their trains trapped by blowing, drifting snow. Some amazing polar portraits of this winter wallop. Lake Michigan is steaming cold, the water far warmer than the freezing air. A water main break threatened to turn this Columbus, Ohio street into an ice rink. The deep freeze shutting schools and icing fountains in the deep south. Now, Dan, just to give you a sense of really how cold it is out here earlier today in a foolish attempt to stay warm, I brought out a cup of tea with me. Silly me, though, it is now a <laughs> solid block of ice that only took about 30 minutes. The frigid air here is bone chilling. The winds are whipping. And, of course, we should mention that this Arctic blast can also be extremely dangerous, even life-threatening in some parts of the country right now. It'll take only five minutes to get frostbite, Dan. Yeah, I know, and, and, and the thing is, we make light of the fact that you now have iced tea, but in fact, it is of utmost concern for someone's safety out there. When you're out, when you're talking to people, because we have, we did get plenty of warning on this. I mean, we knew it was going to be cold. It's January. Obviously, these are unseasonably cold temperatures, but at the same time, though, when you're out talking to people on the streets, I mean, do they seem like they took this seriously? I mean, are they bundled up in layers as everyone ought to be? Well, then there's cold and then there's what we're seeing now. This is absolutely bitter, freezing cold. And I think while people were prepared, this is not the kind of temperature that we normally get in this part of the country. So while you can hear us news reporters saying that it's going to be feeling like it's in the negative, it's a different thing to actually step outside of your door and be faced with this shocking cold. So people are getting a rude awakening to it, but of course the most important thing you can do is to stay bundled up, to not go outside or to be exposed to this any more than you absolutely have to. The advice that has been echoed across the country. All right, Mary, thank you. Get inside, get warmed up, thaw the tea out. I want to bring in Diane Pathew from ABC station WLS in Chicago for more on those Amtrak passengers that were stuck. And, and Diane, for nearly 15 hours on the train? Yeah, some of them have been there for a very long time, over 500 of them, three separate trains, three separate Amtrak trains stuck on one track. It's the BNS, BNSF, the Burlington Northern Santa Fe tracks. There was a huge snow drift that went right over the tracks. The trains couldn't get through. They tried plowing their way out. They could not get past it. They tried pulling these trains out, nothing. So you have over 500 people. Some of them have been there since 3 o'clock yesterday afternoon. Very little food, very little water. They talk about very unclean bathroom conditions on these trains. And they had no place to go. Finally, early, early this morning, Amtrak chartered buses to go and get these passengers, put them on these buses. They're in Mendota, Illinois, which is about 90 miles away from Chicago. 
that got them on these buses and finally brought those chartered buses here to Chicago's Union Station where those passengers were able to get off the buses and finally able to reach their destination. Some of them have already missed big plans. I they talked to a woman who was supposed to be in a Chicago suburb to go to a funeral. She missed that funeral, so very sad for a lot of people, but everybody is doing okay today. So let me ask you this, Diane, because I, I, obviously the, those kinds of facilities are going to start to deteriorate after a while because if you can't have someone in there to maintain them, that is going to be the result of it. But as far as heat, as far as power, actually getting into the trains, do we know, I mean, were they still able to like keep the lights on, keep the heaters going? So everything was on. There was heat on the trains. There was running water. Everything was pretty much safe. It was a safe place to be. I mean, if you had an option, that was where you wanted to be. You certainly didn't want to be outside where it's like 40 below zero. So, yes, they were warm. They had a good place to be. They had places to sleep if they needed to. There were some restaurants to use, granted. They weren't in the best conditions, but it could have been a lot worse for these passengers, definitely. No, absolutely. And certainly not to diminish the significance of the situation. 15 hours on a train is no fun, no matter what your destination might be. What about Amtrak? Are they expecting any other delays because of the cold weather? So what they've decided to do is completely stop using the BNSF tracks for today, all day today. For the next 24 hours, they will not use those tracks. They've also canceled a couple of other trains, Chicago to St. Louis, Chicago to Milwaukee, and some other areas that they've also canceled. So if you do have to ride Amtrak, certainly check before you get on those trains. So there are some changes they are making because of another day of extreme weather. And of course, they're still having to make catch up. One more thing I wanted to mention, a lot of these passengers want to know what happens next. Well, Amtrak says they are going to create a case, open a case up, and they want to hear from these passengers. They want to know what did they do wrong, what did they do right. If this ever happens again, what should they do next time? So at least Amtrak, is opening up the discussion. They want to make this right with all these passengers because they want these passengers to come back to Amtrak another time. Certainly, of course, and, and now the cleanup and, and sort of the, the, the recovery for, for all of that as well. Unfortunately, Diane, I, I know that Chicago, nicknamed the Windy City, you guys are obviously not appreciating that today, but being a fellow Midwesterner of hardy stock, I know that you can appreciate the cold temperatures regardless. How cold does it feel there right now? Okay, so actually today, it's funny because we stepped out and we're like, hey, this isn't that bad. The actual temperature is three degrees below zero, the actual temperature. Ah. You factor in that windshield, the real feel, what it feels like to your skin, and that's why I'm kind of tearing up, it's negative 20. This is actually some relief. Yesterday when we were standing out here, it was 45 below zero. That was what it felt like. So slowly but surely getting some relief, but I'll take a negative three actual temperature over, <laughs> over a negative 15 any day, if you can believe that. I will cut off this guilty feeling that I have for keeping you out there any longer than you have to, <laughs> Diane Pathu from WLS in Thank Chicago. You. Thank you so much. Go inside. Get bundled up. So to get a, a little bit more on the bigger picture on this big freeze, I want to bring in Acuvet with Bernie Reno with a look at this. Bernie, breaking records today? I mean, I would only assume we are. Yeah, well, we have, there were many records that were broken this morning. D.C., Washington, D.C., missed the record by two degrees. That was set back in uh, 1884. But the core of the cold, you heard the uh, correspondent from WLS in Chicago, how it has warmed a little bit now. I'm not going to say warm, but it's not as cold as it was yesterday because the core of the cold has now shifted uh, in the parts of Ontario and Quebec, and the bitter blast now the is down into the southeast. The bitter blast coming into the uh, into the the east and the southeast that's where it is right now and that's where the worst of the cold is now you mentioned records we did have quite a few record lows this morning around new york city laguardia jfk uh, newark international philadelphia broke a record baltimore roanoke records were broken in atlanta charlotte and all the way down in the florida peninsula pensacola in at 19 degrees right now and temperatures well they've warmed a little bit but for the southeast this is still extremely cold remember the record, uh, the normal high temperature in uh, Atlanta, I believe, is in the lower to middle 50s. We're at 17 degrees right now. We'll get to a high temperature of 26. But notice freezing all the way down in the northern parts of uh, Florida along I-10, all the way down in Miami now. 
it's 55 degrees, but that's still a little chilly for that part of the country. But you'll notice the cold. As we mentioned, Chicago, it's still cold, three below. But at this point, yesterday, it was about 15 degrees below. All of this purple is still below zero, and that goes right into the northeastern United States, two below right now in Pittsburgh, eight in New York City. But as we mentioned, the wind, that has to be factored in as well. And this is what it feels like right now, 15 degrees below zero in New York City, 25 below in Syracuse, Buffalo, in at one below. And whenever you get this cold air going over the warm water, and we've seen the pictures of the cold air going over Lake Michigan near Chicago and the steam coming up, where you get bands of lake effect snow, and we continue to see that right around Buffalo right now, snowing hard just south of the city, although that is shifting into the city. And we're going to be looking at snow amounts here downwind of Lake Erie and Ontario of a couple of feet before everything winds down as we go through tonight. But not all my news is bad because the polar vortex, that's the big weather buzzword now. That's going to be lifting northward later this week. So we're going to warm things up across the Midwest and the East Coast as we head toward the weekend. So the worst of the cold for the East right now, tomorrow is still cold, not as harsh. We warm things up later this week, Dan. Not to add insult to injury, but could you repeat that three to five feet of snow expected in some areas? Three to five. Yeah, now keep in mind that's lake effect. That's going to be in a very small area, but south of Buffalo toward parts of Chautauqua, Cattaraugus County, Southern Erie County, Wyoming County, also in parts of Oswego County off Lake Ontario. That lake effect snow, it's like a a hose, only it's snow, you get this concentrated band, and they are measuring the snow and feet. They will do that when things start to wind down off of Lake Erie tonight, not until tomorrow morning in Lake Ontario, although the folks up there, they've seen this before. Yeah, they have seen this before. Having spent some time reporting in Syracuse, I know that mm -hmm. lake effect becomes a four-letter word when it's this time of the year. Bernie Rayner yes, from AccuWeather. Bernie, thank you. I know you guys are busy over there. We appreciate your time. Obviously, it is a bitter cold out there, and it is uh, certainly warming some hearts for some generosity. Take a look at this, what one woman did. These are Peking ducks in Ohio. A woman opened up her home to eight of them. They were living on her property, clearly enjoying the warmth of the home. She brought them in, couldn't bear to see them freezing outside. Now she's got a cage, a bathtub, looks like some pretty fancy digs there. And she's wearing earplugs at night. Apparently the quacking so loud keeping her awake, but generosity, the benevolence in these cold temperatures. A complete recap right here on abcnews.com along with the forecast. For now, I'm Dan Kleffler in New York with this ABC News Digital Special Report.